Hello, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, so this is the ninth lecture of the course and this is the first part of uh, wireless local area networks IEEE 802.11. Okay, so the slide that we'll be following, uh, the one that you're currently seeing is a huge slide and which contains about 90, 90 pages but we are not going to learn all of it uh, we're only going to learn most of the things which are related to the network layer and data link layer okay so any sort of topic which comes about related to physical uh, network layer we're going to skip that and uh, as uh, as i'll be making this video lecture it will become more clear to you which topic will be included and which will not be included for this semester so this uh, slide is actually from uh, the chapter 5 of the book uh, IEEE 802 uh, wireless systems I have already provided that book to you uh, a soft copy of that book so these are the contents that are actually in this chapter so at the very beginning as the scope of 802.11 then there's the reference model architecture services and frame formats then the physical layer and as we have already said we will skip the physical layer there's medium access control protocol medium access control for support for quality of service so the medium access control protocol is something that you have already been through and you've learned some of the protocols there and the new thing is uh, the access control which takes into account quality of service as well okay so then there is radio spectrum management and his the history and selected substandards so these are the history of the substandards that we have already uh, you have already seen in the course outline which are let's say 0.2.11 e n s etc these things okay so the scope of 802.11 describes uh, which layer or which parts of the layers of the traditional protocol stock or the osi model or the tcp ip protocol suit uh, is actually covered by this uh, uh, protocol okay so most protocols 802.11 or 15 or whatever they are they usually uh, deal with or actually standardize a, sp uh, a protocol for a specific layers okay it might be all the layers or it might be some part of the layers okay so this protocol mainly or 802.11 mainly focuses on the two layers okay uh, one and two physical and data link layer and Although you might be thinking that whether it's related to the network layer as well, well, it's somewhat related, but it mainly works with uh, the lo lower two layers, which is the physical layer and the data link layer of the OSI reference model. Okay, in the reference model phase 2.11, the data link control layer is actually divided into two sub layers, right? The logical link control and the medium access control. So the logical link control and the medium access control are two sub layers of the data link layer and this protocol deals with mainly uh, medium access control okay it does not deal with the logical link control so it, it also deals with the physical layer as, as we've already said so next let's have a look at the reference models architectures services and the frame formats so what is a reference model a reference model is an abstraction of the real life hardware or software models of a radio standard helping developers to understand and discuss the technology okay so the, the framework that you'll be seeing it it's actually an, a, an abstraction of the actual uh, protocol and how it's divided into specific categories so that you can understand properly or any per any person can understand properly uh, without having to go into the details of everything okay so this is the reference model of uh, 2.11 and as we can see uh, uh, it mostly works with physical layer and data link control layer, right? So if we if we divide it into the different layers or sub layers, then you can see that the physical layer uh, forms this part, which is composed of PLCP sub layer, PMD sub layer, and in in uh, in general or both of them together and combinedly, it's called PLME. Okay, we're going to learn about the full forms later on, and the data link uh, control layer. Uh, is actually divided into two sub layers one is the medium access control sub layer and the logical link control sub layer okay and as you can see the logical link control sub layer is empty or uh, white okay the only thing th there is uh, or the only thing present there for this protocol is mac sap and mlme sap okay so these are the uh, let's say the communication uh, communicating uh, access points between the medium access control sub layer and the logical link control layer but there are no uh, 
uh, specifications of the data link control layer. Uh, the medium access control sub layer is also uh, called MLME and both of these together is, is called the SME or the state management entity okay so MLME is the Mac layer management entity and uh, PLME is the physical layer uh, management entity okay so these are the three main subcategories uh, and we're going to go into details uh, inside now and as I've already said, the SAP, these are actually the service access points, okay? So they sort of uh, determine how the medium access control sublayer will communicate with the already existing logical link control sublayer. So this was the division of the layers uh, horizontally, right? So if you vertically, uh, or I, I guess I'm saying the opposite, right? So so uh, this division is actually a vertical division and if we divide it in a horizontal way then again we get three separate planes which are the user plane the control plane and the management plane okay so the user plane is uh, let's say uh, for forwarding data packets and to deal with whatever packets are sent by the users and the control plane deals with control packets okay so these are two different types of packets uh, one is used for uh, transferring regular data and one is used for transferring uh, control information to you know uh, for example let's say the state of a network or the state of a switch or the state of a link etc these sort of things and the third is the management plane so this plane deals uh, deals with or actually sends package which are related to you know the overview of the network or the management of the network so these are the descriptions of the layers that I've already said, but let's go through them again. So the physical medium dependent sublayer or PMD is responsible for sending and receiving data via wireless channel and defines the transmission scheme. So as we have already understood, this is supposed to be dealing with the physical layer and it is dealing with the physical layer. But there's another uh, protocol, which is the physical layer convergence protocol or PLCP. So PLCP adapts the request of the common MAC to the different physical layers. Okay. So as you, uh, if you go back, then you can see that PMD is the bottom sub layer of the physical layer and PLCP is the upper sub layer. Okay. So PMD deals with, as we have already said, uh, sending and receiving data via wireless channel and it defines a transmission scheme as well. So these are the physical uh, functionalities and the upper layer plcp actually communicates with the mac layer okay and request the uh, request uh, adapts the request of a common mac to the physical different physical layers okay so this is sort of like an abstraction so that the mac layer can communicate or work with different physical layers okay it doesn't matter whether the uh, medium is changed or not so the mac user plane is fed with data frames via the mac uh, service access point or mac sap okay so this is the MAC SAP that we were talking about at the MAC LLC boundary, okay? So at the boundary, not only MAC SAP, also uh, MLME SAP is present. So the control plane incorporates the uh, MAC layer management entity or MLME and the physical layer uh, management entity PLME. So if you go back, then this MAC SAP is for the user plane communication. Uh, between the logical link uh, control sublayer and the medium access control sublayer and the MLME SAP is the communication between the uh, the same uh, sublayers but uh, with respect to the control plane and as we've already said the management plane is represented by the station management entity or SME so the definitions of these entities is very vague which is why I could not you know, specify the activities of each of these uh, sublayers but it's not important because it's not fixed uh, depending on the scenario these Im implementations of these uh, separate sub layers might be different okay so now let's have a look at the architecture and you have already uh, seen these things but still just a brief overview so as you can see uh, the architecture can be formed of a basic unit for example in case of uh, wide area networks the unit is a cell and in case of uh, WLAN, the unit is a service set, okay? So the basic element of IEEE 802.11 networks is a basic service set. So what is a basic service set? It is a group of stations controlled by so-called coordination function, okay? 
So a single coordination function exists in a basic service set. And what is a coordination function? So a coordination function manages the access to the wireless medium. So now as you can see there are two different kinds of basic service sets here, right? One is a normal BSS and one is a IBSS. So a basic service set has an access point and as you can see this is the access point here and an IBSS or an independent basic service set does not have a, a, an uh, let's say uh, access point, okay? So this is sort of like an ad hoc structure and this is an infrastructured structure, okay? And this, this DS sorry so this DS that we're seeing this is the distribution system okay so this means this is the connection to the internet okay for these basic service sets so the uh, the coordination function uh, the distributed co the coordination function is used by all stations in the BSS whereas the point coordination function is an optional extension for the support of quality of service okay so as we have already uh, read about these two but we're going to see uh, details about how the distributed uh, coordination function works and how the point coordination function works later on, okay? So the DCF and PCF are concepts for spectrum management and medium access. Now IBSS, as I've, as I've already said, uh, independent basic service set. So, so this is the simplest 802.11 network type. It consists of a minimum of two stations. So no station has priority over another because there is no access point present here. So the responsibility of coordinating the medium access is distributed among all the stations, okay? So now as you have seen uh, uh, what happens in case of uh, an IBSS, I think you sort of get an idea, right? Because it's distributed, whatever protocols that you have learned, you, if you already remember the randomized protocols, those protocols were implemented in cases where the uh, network has uh, no node which is uh, more powerful or in more authority compared to the other nodes in that network. So basically whenever there is no uh, power over anyone else, everyone is equal in those cases, uh, the, the uh, medium access control is distributed among all the stations or uh, they follow a randomized uh, protocol. So an infrastructure based BSS includes one station that has access to the wired uh, network uh, which is an access point and an extended service set consists of one or more BSSs connected over the distribution system okay so the infrastructure based BSS okay this is not IBSS okay even if you call this IBSS this is not the same as independent BSS one is independent and one is infrastructure based BSS and the second point that we see here an extended service set so what you see here this thing the whole thing uh, which uh, the distribution system along with the two different BSS or basic service set sets this whole thing together can be called an extended service set or ESS so an extended service set can consist one or more BSSs connected over a distribution system or DS so the DS provides the service to transport MAC service data units or MSDUs between stations that are not in direct communication, okay? So the internet can also be thought of a distribution system because using the internet, uh, uh, a, a network or a BSS or an access point of a BSS can communicate with another access point of a different BSS, okay? Even though both of them are not in direct communication. So an access point uh, provides the distribution system service uh, in the following ways. So the DSS enable the MAC to transport MSDUs between stations that are not in direct communication as we have already said this. So DSSs are not available in an IBSS. So this is an independent BSS we are talking about. So distribution system service is not present in an IBSS or an independent basic service set. Why? As we have already seen in independent basic service sets there is no access point. So without an access point, there is no connection to the uh, distribution system service. So without an access point, no connection to the internet as well. And so you cannot communicate with another BSS. So in case of independent basic service set, there can be no communication with other basic service sets. So there are two categories of services in 802.11. Now we are talking about the distribution service system or distribution system service, the DSS. So these services are of two types, the station service and the distribution system service. 
So we are going to see what these two separate categories of services entail in the next slide. So the main system service of a basic service set is uh, the Mac service data unit or MSU delivery. Okay, so this is the most important thing because without this you will not be able to communicate with any other uh, uh, access point or any other basic service set. But there are some other uh, uh, system services as well which include de-authentication and so the de-authentication is a process through which a node which is connected to let's say an access point or maybe is part of a network sends a de-authentication packet or de-authorization packet uh, which makes uh, which no which makes it known to the other nodes that this node is now disassociating or removing itself from the network so this is a notification type packet and it cannot be denied by any of the networks okay so using this network or sorry using this process any node in a network if it feels that there is a breach of trust or maybe a breach of authenticity then it can remove itself from that network and the next service it provides is privacy so as uh, a wireless uh, network uses uh, an, an un unlicensed spectrum which is available to anyone who is physically present there so there needs to be uh, some kind of uh, way to handle the privacy and stop eavesdropping and maintain some sort of security okay so this is done through the use of WEP so WEP is wired equivalent privacy so this provides a significant amount of security even when someone is eavesdropping. So the name comes because it provides sort of like an equal uh, security uh, compared to a wired network where without physically tapping the wire you cannot access the information. So this the, the name comes from that uh, methodology. So the distribution system services include reassociation, disassociation and integration. So what is reassociation and disassociation? Okay, so before we go into reassociation and disassociation, we need to understand what is association. So whenever a node wants to send a packet through a distribution system, it sends a packet to the access point that it is present in. For example, if it is present in a, a basic service set, then it sends an association packet to the uh, access point so once the association is established then the node can send any packet uh, to the distribution system by using that access point now reassociation means uh, moving that uh, removing that association with that particular access point and then forming another association with another access point okay so this means uh, the reassociation can allow a node which is moving or which is mobile to change its association between uh, different uh, access points so that it can connect to the distribution system and this association is as I've already said it, it removes the association with a particular uh, access point okay so uh, if you're confused about this association and deauthentication then let me make a little bit of difference in this case so the service sets or system services that we have already said the MSU delivery and uh, deauthentication and privacy okay so all these services that means the system services means these services can be provided by a basic service set within its own basic service set it does not need a distribution system and etc okay so what does it mean it means that an access point itself can provide these facilities or uh, these facilities are provided even when there is no distribution system or there is no other uh, basic service set connected to this basic service set through a distribution system so then why why do we need deauthentication we need deauthentication when let's say you are present in a network and in a in a bss you suddenly understand that some node in that network uh, is is performing a breach of trust or a breach of authenticity then uh, an authentication or deauthentication packet is sent to that node and also to the surrounding nodes to let them know of this situation okay and the privacy is similar the privacy is required even when you're communicating in a single BSS compared to that the distribution system services are provided in cases where the node needs to communicate with another node in another basic service uh, set okay so the reassociation and disassociation as I've already said these are related to when you want to connect to another node in another basic service set so this is the main difference between the system services and the 
distributed system services as the name suggests uh, the distribution system services are provided uh, when we are working with different distributed systems or different distributed basic service sets I hope this is clear but if it's still not clear you can al always ask questions so the next uh, distributed system service or DSS is integration and integration enables the delivery of MSDUs between non H0 2.11 LANs and the distribution service via the so-called portal okay so if we go back to the previous figure in this case this BSS can be of one protocol and this BSS can be of a separate protocol okay so the integration allows sending of a packet from one BSS to another let's say separate network through the distribution system so this is the uh, functionality of the integration so these are the different system services or uh, distribution system services provided by uh, WLAN and the portal here that we're talking about is nothing but the connection between uh, the, the basic service sets access point and the distribution system so then we have the frame formats but as I've already said this falls under the physical layer category so we're not going to learn about the frame formats okay let's move on so so we just need to know this thing which is a bit important uh, which is uh, the MSDUs or Mac service data units are of three types okay management data and control frames frames as we have already said before right there are three planes if you remember the data plane or the user plane and the control plane and the management plane so each of those planes communicate using different types of uh, MPDUs okay so so as we have come across two separate terms one is MPDU and another is MSDU okay so let's understand the difference between these two MSDU means Mac service data unit and MPDU means Mac protocol data unit so whenever you add a, a, a header or or you can say a Mac header when you add this Mac header with an MSDU or Mac service data unit then it becomes an MPDU or Mac protocol data units so similarly as MSDUs are three types uh, MPDUs are also of three types so as you can see here there are different uh, frame formats for the different kinds of MPDUs as you can see for the management frame this is the Mac header and in case of data frame this is the MAC header and in this case you can see there are uh, multiple addresses given here if you remember this strategy uh, multiple addresses are given to you know uh, add some sort of security and also to know the locations but in case of control frames these uh, uh, MAC header is very short and the addresses are not required so the control frames are of two types one is RTS or request to send and CTS which is clear to send and also acknowledgement okay so when do we use this RTS and CTS and acknowledgement we will see later on and the management frame consists of beacons association and authentication packets we have already talked about authentication pa uh, packets and association packets right or when they are used we are going to see more about beacon a little bit later so depending on the functionality of the frame the frame body size uh, of the data and management frames may vary but the control frame size is always fixed so next we have physical layer and as I've said we'll, uh, we'll exclude the physical layer it uses FHSS which is fre frequency hop spread spectrum okay so now uh, we are going to see medium access control protocol okay so the medium access control protocol is built with the help of two coordination functions as we have already said one is DCF which is distributed coordination function and this is for traffic without quality of service or asynchronous services so if you remember there are two kinds of services asynchronous services and synchronous services you should have learned it in the in the previous courses so asynchronous services uh, do not have any order to the messages or the packet so even if the orders are changed there is no problem but in case of synchronous services the order of the packets need to be maintained so examples of synchronous services can include video data and audio data 
So PCF or point coordination function is for traffic with quality of service requirements, okay, or uh, uh, synchronous services. So in the following, we discuss the distributed uh, coordination function and also an infrastructure based uh, basic service set, okay. So at first we're going to learn about DCF and then we're going to learn about PCF. So the basic 802.11 MAC protocol is a DCF which works as a listen before talk scheme, okay, based on the carrier sense multiple access or CSMA. So if you remember the uh, the protocol CSMA worked in this way, it uh, it listened to or sensed the environment and when it sensed that there is uh, no one sending packet or the channel is not busy only then it used to send packets okay so this is this is also called the listen before talk scheme in this protocol so this is the most basic uh, function or uh, distributed coordination function is the most basic function because as we've already said DCF is used in all sorts of communication in WLAN but PCF is used only when QoS or quality of service is required so this is an example or a figure which shows how listen before talk works okay so as you can see here uh, the very first uh, figure a very first part of the figure uh, this is the noise from a microwave oven okay which is sort of like uh, an uh, analog signal and this is the interference from H02.11 frames and as you can see these are sort of like digital the previous one was uh, like analog and this is uh, like digital uh, packets or digi digital signals so the process used to understand whether the channel is empty or not is called clear channel assessment okay so as you can see these are the examples of clear channel assessments so the first one is a physical clear channel assessment which is used for noise detection okay so using this uh, physical uh, clear channel assessment uh, we get the this specific output okay so as you can see uh, this these two marks identify whether the channel is busy or whether the channel is idle so if the decibel meter or the level of noise is reaches the busy mark then you cannot send packets and if it if it is in the idle mark then you are you can send packets okay now as you can see as this part contains data and this part also contains data right and even if this part is empty there is an analog signal from a microwave oven so these parts indicate that the channel is busy okay and these parts indicate that the channel is free okay so now you might be confused okay there are some parts uh, which contain data but it still shows that it's free right so this is because this is a physical clear channel assessment for noise detection okay not for preamble detection so noise detection only detects whether there is noise or not and preamble detection detects whether someone else is sending a packet or not okay so these are two different kinds of channel assessments one is for already communication existing between uh, different devices in the network and another is noise coming from any other communication not communication in the network but let's say any other noise for example it can be a microwave wave oven or it might be a thunderstorm or something like that okay so as you can see when the packets are being sent only in those cases the preamble detection uh, uh, lets us know that the channel is busy okay now there is another kind of clear channel assessment which is a virtual clear channel assessment okay so this uses a network allocation vector or nav if you have already heard of this uh, then this nav is actually something which is used to let all the nodes in the channel know that okay now I will talk so everyone be silent okay so whenever uh, I let everyone know that I will be talking so even though the channel is not busy all the nodes will assume that the channel is busy okay so this is this is why it is called a virtual clear channel assessment because why is it virtual because physically there is no communication going on but because the nav was set on so every other node will assume that the channel is busy so as you can see at the very end it says that after fully receiving the frame the node can set nav okay so what does this mean this means after this communication ends then uh, the nav can be set 
okay so we have already said this the channel sensing function is called the clear channel assessment so it uses a power threshold which is minus 82 decibel meter so this is possibly implementation uh, implementation dependent which means this level can change okay so what does this level mean this is the busy level okay so this means that if any uh, noise exceeds the minus 82 decibel meter uh, threshold then the channel will be assumed as busy so if a station detects a signal power with power larger than this threshold then the radio channel is assumed to be busy okay otherwise the channel is idle so there are different variants of uh, clear channel assessment ordinary noise detection which is the first one as we have already said uh, then only signals from other 802.11 networks which is the second figure okay and okay so this is the first uh, and second figure so this is for uh, noise detection this is for preamble detection which is related to other 802.11 uh, nodes or communication so as we already said the network allocation vector is an addition to the physical sensing of the radio channel so it is re uh, referred to as virtual carrier sensing and in, in fact has the function of reserving the channel for some time okay so you should have already learned about nav in the previous courses so it is a timer which decrements irrespectively of the status of the medium so whether the channel is busy or not uh, there is a counter in the nav and the counter will keep on decreasing until it reaches zero so when the counter reaches zero then the channel is assumed to be, be uh, free and if it does not reach zero uh, during the time when it is still decrementing the channel is assumed to be busy so as long as the nav is set for the clear channel assessment or the uh, CCS sensed the radio channel as being busy a station is not allowed to initiate transmission okay so this is uh, virtual sensing or virtual carrier sensing so so next we are going to learn about timing and interframe spaces so this slide shows an example of three separate scenarios where an MSDU delivery was attempted okay so in the first scenario uh, there is noise during uh, sending the data packet so this indicates an unsuccessful uh, delivery attempt okay and in the second scenario uh, there is no noise during the data packet but there is noise during the acknowledgement packet so even when the acknowledgement, acknowledgement packet is not received due to some interference it is still an unsuccessful uh, delivery only in the case where there is no noise which is the third scenario so there is no noise even during data sending and also during uh, receiving the acknowledgement okay so only this is considered as a successful uh, delivery okay so even in the second case when there is noise during acknowledgement data will again be retransmitted so the time between uh, two max frames is called the interframe space okay but there are many different kinds of interframe spaces which are used for different scenarios so these are the first one is short interframe space or SIFS and point coordination function or PCF interframe space which is called uh, which is in short called PIFS then distributed coordination function or uh, DCF interframe space so this is called DIFS and extended interframe space so these IFS I think you have already learned about interframe space but you you might not have learned about the different kinds of interframe spaces so these interframe spaces uh, represent three different levels of medium access okay so we're going to see uh, when they are used and why they're used so the shorter the interframe space the higher priority in medium access why because the shorter interframe space means you have to wait for a shorter time before accessing the medium compared to that longer interframe spaces mean you have to wait for a longer time before accessing the network okay so shorter interframe space indicates higher priority while longer interframe spaces indicate uh, low, uh, lower priority okay so all interframe spaces are independent of the channel data rate okay so they are fixed it doesn't matter whether the data rate is high or less these interframe spaces are fixed and these are the interframe spaces which are defined by the pro uh, 802.11 protocol okay so this is an example which shows the different interframe spaces and when they are used okay so we have a long way to go with this slide but before we proceed we are going to stop now for the first part and for the second part of this lecture we are going to continue from this figure okay so for the time being please have a look at this figure and try to understand what is going on
thank you and with this i'm going to end uh the lecture for the ninth lecture okay assalamu alaikum everyone